Schroeder. I'm the founder of the Ascended Master Teaching Foundation, which has a central office in Manchester. Welcome to the lecture series, The Ascended Masters Answer the Fundamental Questions of Life. This lesson is entitled, Lesson 14, Voluntary Service, the Natural Activity of Life. The lesson consists of four parts. During this lesson we shall discuss the following subjects. Impersonal service, the natural activity of life, when to serve, the required service, examples of opportunities to serve, the reward for service, the strictness of the cosmic law, worldwide service required, loyalty to the teachings, visions of a golden age, and finally the spiritual caravan. Here's a short introduction to the lesson. Beloved students, we all promise to expand God's kingdom through impersonal service before we first embodied on earth. Impersonal service is service that not only blesses one person but many persons. It is service that is given without any thought of remuneration, either in terms of personal recognition or money. It is the type of service Jesus gave for three years, Mr. Ballard for ten years, Geraldine Innocenti for sixteen years, Mother Mary and William Cassier for over fifty years, and the first Krishna for 640 years. It is the type of service that beloved Archangel Michael and the great white brotherhood extend on our behalf every day. It is impersonal service that is the natural activity of life. During the first two golden ages there was absolute perfection. There was the activity of teaching and learning and no one needed to be saved. The first Krishna was the first world savior. World savior is also called Christ. That was over a million years ago. We call him the first Krishna because other Krishnas embodied in later time periods. He came from another planet to establish the resurrection flame on earth. This flame was necessary for mankind and for elemental life in rebuilding an imperfect form created by imperfect thoughts and feelings. The resurrection flame contains the resurrecting power without which man cannot enter into his Christ estate. The first world savior was provided for mankind when man first chose to turn away from God. After the fall of man, 49 world saviors have come forth to earth at regular intervals. Krishna taught, service is the law of life. From the moment individualization takes place, the heart flame begins to accept the responsibility of giving a balance to the universe for the privilege of drawing breath, using life and sustaining a separate existence. Service may be in the form of serving a community, a nation or fellow man. Individuals who do not choose to serve are temporarily taken out of the race until they will accept again their responsibility to be conscious servants. All the heartache, the disappointment, the disillusionment, the failure comes because the student does not apply the fundamental principle that service to the Godhead alone is the purpose of all creation. When man serves individuals, when man serves a nation, a king, the presiding head of a country, he serves form and the return will always contain the imperfection of such form. 
When man serves God, his service will take him into the presence of individuals, nations, monarchs, and he will greatly benefit them all, knowing that neither his reward nor his ultimate goal will come from these beneficiaries. One should serve like the sun. It is shining in your heaven. Mankind is the beneficiary of its light, but the sun shines for the glory of God to all men. To serve God does not mean to disassociate oneself from one's fellow man, nor to cast off the obligation of everyday living. Serving should be the motive of your life, action and being, just as you would set a thermostat and bless all in your home. Don't expect a return for your service. Peace comes only when to the best of your ability you are endeavoring to serve the cause of good. As I said, Krishna abided upon the earth for at least 640 years. When he completed his service and returned to his star, he took with him 1,400 disciples who, through his service, gained the ascension. When should one serve? There is never any better time than right now. In this way, one is spared from the remorse suffered by Paul, who was not prepared to acknowledge Jesus as the Messiah. Many good chilas waste a lifetime, awaiting a cosmic summons, passing the golden door of opportunity, never considering the practical service that can be rendered now on behalf of the Masters. Elmoria warned us that once a person has received the gift of this knowledge of the Ascended Master teaching, if that word of freedom is not balanced by impersonal service, that individual receives karma, namely the karma of omission. Some people declare, when I have attained, I shall serve the Lord. However, the Ascended Masters point out that if they would have to wait until the students were perfect in every way, they would have to wait forever. Therefore, a better statement would be, serve while you learn. All of you have heard the term hell and have probably wondered exactly what it meant. Hell is nothing more than the remorse one suffers when he or she stands before the karmic board and is shown his past life. Then the person realizes what might have been, how he could have served life better. For all life energy, for every electron loaned to an individual, he must render an accounting. How much knowledge and experience should one have before one steps forth and volunteers his or her spare time? Very little is needed. For example, the entire Bridge to Freedom teaching was saved by one group leader who was the least experienced group leader among 17 group leaders of the Bridge to Freedom. There is, however, one criteria, one prerequisite for impersonal service, and that prerequisite is proper motivation. All service so rendered should be given in a true sense of humility and peace, with a joyful heart and without expecting remuneration. This concludes Lesson 14, Part 1. I sincerely hope you enjoyed it and I hope we will meet soon again for Part 2 of the lesson. God bless you.